Thanks very much. Right, good evening everyone. My talk tonight is on Linus Pauling. Now, as a quick pop quiz, has anyone heard of Linus Pauling? Loads of you, brilliant, fantastic, but about, about half of you. So, double Nobel Prize winner to Woo Munger. So, I'm going to go over why I think he's fascinating. So, continue the pop quiz. Who's heard of this guy? Albert Einstein. Of course you have. Of course you all have. Now, he, he won one Nobel Prize, but not for uh, relativity, for the discovery of the photoelectric effect. Now, do you all know who this is? Marie Curie. Thank you very much. Two Nobel Prizes. Um, one for discovery of radium and polonium, and the other one for uh, radiation in general. But uh, the subject of my talk is this guy, Linus Pauling, who has also won two Nobel Prizes. But he's unique in that he's the only person to have won two Nobel Prizes in two different subjects on his own. Um, <clears throat> so Linus Pauling was uh, three things, essentially. A scientist, a humanitarian, and very sadly, a quack. Uh, we're we're going to learn about why he was considered a great scientist, first of all. And his major work was on the nature of chemical bonds. So I don't know if there's any biochemists in the audience like me, but um, he discovered the alpha helix and the beta sheet. So these are major, major discoveries. And he won his first Nobel Prize for atomic orbital hybridization. Now, there's no way I could summarize that in one slide, but if anyone's done A-level chemistry, you remember your SP2, SP3 orbitals? He worked all that out. But one of the things he did, uh, one of the questions he did answer, which hopefully you might have all at least considered if you don't know the answer, which is why does ice float? If you've, if you've got a drink with ice in it, um, uh, <coughs> you might wonder this. Uh, also, but it works all the way up to icebergs. Now, when you think about it, ice shouldn't float because, as we all know, solids are denser than liquids. So the solid state of something should sink in a liquid. So if we have a look at what Linus Pauling discovered about the nature of water, he found out a property called electronegativity. And he found that the oxygen is ever so slightly negative and the hydrogens are ever so slightly positive. So each water molecule is a bit like a little magnet. And as we all know with uh, magnets, opposites attract and um, uh, uh, likes repel. So instead of all coming together, uh, water molecules in ice form this structure where, where it's not as dense as it would be because of, uh, because of the electronegativity. Um, he also worked on uh, trying to work out the structure of DNA, but he was beaten to it by, by our guys, by, by Watson and Crick. So that's a very, very brief overview of his scientific achievements. But he was always a also a great humanitarian. He was an... He was a humanist and an avid anti-war campaigner, campaigning against nuclear weapons. And he did some work which um, stopped overground nuclear weapons testing. It's what he won his second Nobel Prize for. Um, in work that's known as the baby tooth survey. So he found out that uh, strontium, which is radioactive, similar to calcium, was working its way through the food chain from nuclear tests and into the teeth of children. And this peace activism... Um, put him right in the eyes of Senator Joseph McCarthy. Uh, he was an alleged communist and even had his passport taken away. And his own university, Caltech, didn't formally uh, congratulate him on his Nobel Prize. So what about his legacy? Well, he won the um, uh, USSR equivalent of the Nobel Peace Prize uh, in 1970, which uh, isn't going to uh, do him any favours in right-wing America. Um, but... Sadly, a lot of people are going to remember him for his uh, quackery. He wrote a book called How to Live Longer and Feel Better. Um, and he uh, uh, founded this idea of orthomolecular medicine. So vitamin C, which was his big thing, he would uh, uh, partake in lots of vitamin C every day. I just think that quote there is uh, stunning. 75% of all cancer can be prevented and cured by vitamin C alone. That's coming from a Nobel laureate. And orthomolecular medicine is this idea of the right molecules and the right amounts. And I think, I suspect it started off this trend uh, for multivitamins. You take a multivitamin, you take way, way more of all of these vitamins than you need to. So Linus Pauling, just to conclude, he was quite an enigma. 
he died when he was uh, 93, and he was one of the most important scientists of the 20th century, and a great humanitarian who stopped overground nuclear testing. But he was a quack. Thank you very much.